There have been 119 school shootings in the U.S. since 2018, resulting in 88 victims' deaths. After the high-profile mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas, where 19 students and two teachers were killed, many politicians who are opposed to stricter gun laws have been calling for an alternative. So why don't we harden the school? We harden our schools. To harden our schools. The private security industry that focuses specifically on the education sector had a projected revenue of $3.1 billion in 2021 and is expected to grow by more than 8% annually on average. Those figures don't even include companies that manufacture fortification options such as bulletproof doors and backpacks. My two boys have a bulletproof backpack because I just feel like at the end of the day, if all else fails, then they will have that to possibly protect them. For me as a mom, it was something that I could control. If you have a bulletproof backpack, you're just increasing your odds of, of being in better shape than not having a bulletproof backpack. If they just couldn't have got through the door, they couldn't have got to, to, to the kids. President Biden signed a new gun control law that provides $1 billion in funding for schools to, quote, create safe and healthy learning environments for all students, as well as $300 million for training and equipment. But there's a question of how much these hardening measures can help in the event of a school shooting. Many of the best things that make schools safer are actually invisible. We really got to be able to evolve into extended long-term solutions around mass shootings in this country. While the country's clash over gun regulation continues, here's how administrators, teachers, and parents are securing schools and how much it costs. Because it's so difficult to save lives once a shooter is in the building, the most common measures schools implement are meant to prevent the would-be shooter from gaining access to the building. These include limiting the number of entry points to a building, security cameras, and requiring faculty and staff to wear badges or photo IDs. We know that the first and best line of defense is a well-trained, highly alert staff and student body. The number one way we find out about weapons plots, kids who are going to cause self-harm, is by kids who come forward and tell an adult that they trust. There are also equipment and protocols that would alert police in the event a shooter does make it into the building. You have to be able to create those layers of school safety protection from fencing and the perimeter of a school, single point of entry, locking doors, cameras, panic buttons so you can communicate a mass notification. If all other measures fail and someone with a firearm does enter the school, security experts say that the school should have a solid plan in place. More than two decades ago after Columbine, the law enforcement tactics shifted from having a perimeter set up and waiting from the SWAT team to today where the first officer on scene, single officer entry goes in to neutralize the shooters. The whole idea here is to be able to move that gunfire away from those who are innocent and uh, that gunfire is directed towards police who are in a far better position to terminate that threat. There's a gap right in the middle where when someone truly decides they're going to do this and they start walking down the hallway with a loaded rifle, we do nothing. There is nothing in place during that, you know, roughly 10 minutes according to FBI data from start to when the police come and end this, there's nothing being done. The Uvalde Police Department is being criticized for its slow response to the active shooter situation. And for the benefit of hindsight, where I'm sitting now, of course it was not the right decision, it was a wrong decision, period. The Uvalde Police Department was unable to respond in time for publication. We know these incidents unfold in seconds and minutes, and that every minute lost can, can also result in the number of lives lost. Even when the police react quickly, the death toll can still be catastrophic. During the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, the first officer entered the school within six minutes of arriving at the scene. But the gunman still killed 20 children and six adults. We had issues in, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School where our SRO stood outside the school as a coward and did not go in and engage the threat as 17 people or were being shot and killed. Scott Peterson was the student resource officer, known as an SRO, on duty during the Parkland shooting. He has pleaded not guilty to criminal charges brought against him for failing to confront the gunman. 
His lawyer told CNBC, Our hearts go out to all the families who experienced tragedies as a result of the abhorrent massacre committed by the sole person responsible, Nicholas Cruz. My client now faces a potential life sentence in spite of doing everything he could to zealously serve and protect the Parkland students. So I don't don't think it's a bad idea to put in bulletproof glass in a door. Um, I think it is a good idea because like in, in Parkland, that would have saved my daughter's life because he broke the glass and shot right through there and shot directly at her. Kirk Ferguson is the chief of staff at R2P Innovations, which makes bulletproof doors that are specifically designed with schools in mind. The company itself was born directly out of Sandy Hook. We just kept hearing over and over, you know, from from parents in that tragedy. Um, If they just couldn't have got through the door, they couldn't have got to, to, to the kids. R2P doors are made to withstand assault rifle rounds. It's one of the questions we've always posed as a company is, you know, your child is sitting in a classroom right now and someone has just exited their car and locked and loaded an assault rifle and they have broke, they have walked through the door of your child's school. What do you want? Do you want a camera system with an AI brain hanging off of it? Do you want a pistol armed SRO somewhere on campus? Or do you want a bullet stopping door in your kid's classroom? My name is Yasser Sheikh. I'm the president and CEO of Gordog Security. We manufacture and distribute products like pepper spray, stun guns, bulletproof backpacks, uh, and other kind of uh, daily essentials needed for personal security. I am in favor of giving kids and teachers uh, some essential tools to keep them safe. I kind of saw the practicality of having protection integrated with your daily life, right? So something that people would wear on a daily basis or carry on a daily basis that also doubled as a personal security mechanism. The backpacks Guard Dog Security makes are level 3A, which means they can protect against most handguns. Most daily carry bulletproof products will be level 3A, which will they're not rated for assault rifle protection. Uh, the reason is that at that point, they become very impractical for daily use. Bulletproof backpacks are not single-handed solution, right? But it does provide a sense of security. We, we hear that and we see it, but in no way, shape or form does it guarantee that you will be safe in the event of a shooting, but it does increase your chances. The Department of Justice, Department of Education, and the Department of Homeland Security at the federal level each have programs that provide grant money to school districts for security upgrades. Schools are limited to spending money on select security measures based on the terms of the grant program. For example, the Department of Justice's grant program called the Stop School Violence Act doesn't allow schools to use funds for, quote, target hardening equipment. But schools that receive funds under a different DOJ grant program called the School Violence Prevention Program are allowed to spend that money on equipment, such as metal detectors, locks, lighting, and technology that helps notify law enforcement during an emergency. The Department of Justice has awarded more than $410 million in grants through the programs created under the Stop School Violence Act of 2018. But grants can be an inconsistent form of funding. We've gone into schools where they've had a one-time shot in the arm funding through a grant or a school board allocation for putting in additional cameras, for example. And we go in three or four years later, the cameras aren't working. They have no budget at the school or school district level for maintenance, repair, replacement. But yet there's this facade, this security theater that they've made schools safer. And when in reality, a lot of the technology and equipment's not being used. On top of inconsistent funding for schools to buy these services, the demand from parents and school districts also tends to ebb and flow. We do see an increase in demand after uh, after some sort of shooting that's widely broadcasted. Sandy Hook was a catalyst to the demand. This sporadic demand can affect industry growth. When it comes to companies that provide security equipment and services to control who can access the building, the growth rates can vary from 5% to 15%, depending on how many shootings took place in a given year. I've worked through the aftermath of Columbine, Sandy Hook, Parkland, now Uvalde, Texas. And one thing is clear, that while we have this overnight explosion of experts, charlatans, gadgets, gurus, everyone with these solutions, three years later, short of another tragedy, those companies that have opened up a new market to target pre-K through 12 schools are out of business. Despite this inconsistent demand, the sector is growing. The security and hardware and product industry has been increasingly 
and more actively engaged in lobbying state legislatures and Congress to get funds released. R2P's doors run about $6,000 each, including installation. What a lot of people don't realize is that the standard door that you have on that classroom anyway, if it's a heavy duty door with heavy duty locks and closers that it should have for the abuse that a school door goes through, you're looking at about a $2,000 door anyway. So while it is more expensive, most people have an image of their mind that, you know, the door costs $150 at Lowe's um, and $6,000 is this unimaginable number, but for the protection that it brings, it's, it's not even exponential cost. But school security is a balancing act. But schools are different entities. It's the different climate and culture serves a different purpose. They're community centers. They're used after hours for athletics, performing arts and other functions on weekends, often tied to recreation uh, departments and programs out in the community. As long as we have guns that are out in our environment uh, and being that we are a gun society, that there's always going to be the possibility that these guns are going to get in the wrong hands of the wrong people. The U.S. Congress passed rare bipartisan legislation to address gun violence shortly after the Uvalde shooting. President Biden signed it into law on June 25, 2022. The law provides $1 billion in funding for schools to, quote, create safe and healthy learning environments for all students, as well as an additional $300 million to go toward training and equipment that can help in the event of a threat of violence. The bill also provides money to support access to mental health care services in schools and enhances background checks for anyone under 21 years old seeking to buy a firearm. We need to continue to send our kids to school, and I want to make sure that they're being sent in the safest environment possible. And it's not going to stop, sadly to say, until we as a nation really find some new resolve and meet these new challenges that are in front of us around these issues of mass shootings in this country.